Greetings! This is another Sprocket video and today I have some very interesting stuff to show, so let's go! So, before I'm going to talk about the main topic of the video, here's some insight on how I actually developed this and where the idea came from. And it all started in uh, mid to late January and early February. And uh, there was a small little event named the Intercommunity Contest. I was one of the participants and my final vehicle I uh, entered into that uh, contest was this, the HGS Ballista. Hmm, interesting. If I had a nickel for every time I opened the video with the HGS Ballista just to provide some extra contest to the topic of the video, I would have two nickels which isn't a lot, but it uh, is weird that it happened twice. <clears throat> anyway, so this inter-community contest was kind of chaotic, uh, so there was uh, one time where uh, uh, a shit ass actually downloaded our vehicles and shared it with the enemy team, and we collectively decided on uh, making uh, new tanks for the contest, and uh, actually this is my new tank, this no, this is nowhere near like the original vehicle I entered into the contest, so yeah, it was a weird situation. And even after that, uh, our team had several complaints, problems, accusations were thrown around, one of them being important to this video's topic, that the enemy team, and I quote, made tanks that uh, had shell-eating side armor. <laughs> I'm not kidding, that's something that one of my team members actually said. <laughs> and that got me thinking. So I have this HS Ballista with an extremely angled front and uh, basically completely unangled sides. But what if I made a tank that has uh, not just highly angled front, but highly angled side armor as well? But of course I can't exactly make a replica of the Pyramid of Giza that uh, wouldn't really be very practical, if I have to be quite honest, so I had to be more uh, clever with how I'm making this uh, armor, and that is how I made this. Uh, but Gunther, what the fuck is this? It's science. <laughs> so, as you can see, these are highly, highly angled uh, pieces of armor, and they are uh, only one millimeter thick, which means that uh, these are very light. That's a huge advantage that they are very light. Of course, the surface area basically offsets this uh, weight advantage, although not by much so, it's still a lot lighter than it otherwise would be. And this is basically an impenetrable wall. It's made of 85 degree angled plates, so it leaves uh, some uh, room for uh, error, maybe the enemy is slightly above me and aiming downwards, that's not a problem, the angle of these plates basically uh, still are enough to auto-bounce the incoming shells, whether they would be uh, shells with 200mm of penetration or 2 million uh, millimeters of penetration doesn't matter. This is the wonder of uh, Sprocket's game mechanics, you can abuse them, and that's precisely what I did here, abused the game mechanics. So I already listed two advantages, this is an um, impenetrable wall and it's very light. The third advantage is that it's uh, very easy to make, so I'm uh, putting down this, I decrease the height to... 10 centimeters. I adjust its uh, thickness. Get out of here. And extend it a couple times. Select these edges, split. Select these edges again, split. Uh, and for 85 degree armor, this is uh, pretty much enough. However, you can also split it again and uh, what you are going to do next is select uh, every second point here 
I think I made a mistake. And uh, drag. And there you go, you have extremely angled armor. So there are three advantages, as I said, light, impenetrable and easy to make. However, there are some serious disadvantages, one being that uh, this is god ugly. <laughs> Uh, like uh, you can cover it up with uh, add-on plates and uh, you can technically make this uh, or kind of armor angled too if you align um, these uh, plates with add-on plates so yes it is angleable i'm not even sure if that's a word but uh, yeah it's uh, probably not easy to do when uh, you are trying to make something like a hetzer i.e. something with uh, angles on all sides then it might be difficult to manage so it's difficult to work with it's ugly it takes up a lot of space as you can see so you basically have to uh, make sure that uh, you are building the tank around this kind of armor and then here comes the worst disadvantage of them all which uh, basically ensures that uh, this uh, kind of armor is very niche and it uh, just simply doesn't work most of the time so let's take this uh, one millimeter plated uh, armor uh, chunk here and uh, let's tilt it backwards because I am now on a hill so what ends up happening is uh, all of the auto bounce angles are now gone because of the hill I want tilts me backwards and uh, as you can see it's just uh, one millimeter plates which uh, are uh, automatically penetrable. So the main weakness of this kind of armor is literally being on a slight hill. However that didn't stop me from making two MBTs with it and uh, the first one makes uh, use of uh, this kind of armor pretty damn well and uh, this uh, tank would be the AGS 108-7-1 Tardigrade named after those small little creatures that uh, can be rather hard to kill <laughs> uh, you might also know them as uh, water bears now this thing is pretty damn interesting because it's uh, probably one of my more uh, detailed tanks as you can see there are ERA blocks uh, on the top of the turret here's uh, the gunner sights here's a pretty damn uh, great looking uh, cupola for the commander there's also some uh, remote weapon stations one being an ATGM exclusive weapon station and one with a 20mm uh, auto cannon, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what the tardigrade is. Also, you can uh, remove the add on armor. I said remove the add on armor, and uh, that's how it looks like without it. It's pretty much a leopard, well it's not a leopard, it's a leopardant, uh, so yeah, let's go. Now the remote weapon station is, uh, is uh, pretty damn good, it only has 30mm of penetration but uh, that's uh, pretty much uh, all I need for uh, most uh, situations when I'm engaging lightly armored tanks well at least their sides and the 130mm main gun is uh, really really good except uh, when uh, it decides to not kill the enemy sometimes it just goes uh, straight through and doesn't do any damage whatsoever I don't think I can pen that with my 20 mil. However, my 130 mm gun is uh, really good for that kind of job. Yeah, I'll 
delete it again. Yeah, the 20 mil gun is uh, sometimes useless, I have to admit it, but uh, it's nice to have occasionally. And there you go, the 30 grade completed this, uh, this uh, I almost said operation because uh, I miss uh, playing hard mode warfare, this uh, scenario, yes, that's the word. And with uh, better uh, lighting you can see some details uh, a bit better. And uh, don't worry, I didn't forget about the driver's position, although it's a bit hard to see. But uh, there's the hatch and here are some periscopes. So yes, this is the tardigrade and it, uh, as I said, uses the 85mm. 85 millimeters? No, 85 degrees, 1 millimeter armor. And I basically had to build the entire tank around this kind of armor, so yeah, it's not great. However, it does the job occasionally. But I did some improvements on it. Say hello to the Tardigrade 2 electric boogaloo, which comes to destroy you. Alright, at a first glance you might ask, Günther, isn't this the same tank you showed us earlier? And to that I say, no, it isn't. The main difference between the two is the armor. As you can see, the turret front and the portion of the hull front is much denser than the sides or the front of the other tardigrade. So what the tardigrade 2 has is uh, 89 degrees sloped armor on the front, one millimeter thick, of course. And that uh, basically uh, improves my protection on hills, because uh, using my 10 degrees of gun depression might decrease it to around 79 degrees of angle. However, if I uh, add uh, some distance into the equation, then it's around 80 and a half or 81 degrees of uh, sloped armor, which is an out of bounds angle. So it's much more effective than the 85 degrees angled armor on the sides or the front of the tardigrade one. However, with the tardigrade two, as you can see, this does take up a lot of space. So I basically can't even use it for this size if I want to keep my tanks uh, looking normal ish. Uh, so yes, that's a major downside. And another uh, upgrade over the previous study grade is the remote weapon station, which has now a 37mm autocannon. <laughs> also some visual changes. Uh, I did some texturing with these uh, bar add-on pieces and uh, that makes my tank look uh, a bit cooler in my opinion. There's also an active protection system now on the tank. The rear storage area is a bit different. There's some storage on the front as well. The hull is slightly bigger. Well, now that I think about it, the whole tank is only slightly bigger than the previous version, but uh, that doesn't matter. You know what? Let's go! You know, this Tardigrade 2 might be my uh, favorite tank I uh, made so far, mostly because one, it just looks so great, two, I uh, needed four days to make all the details for it, and um, a fifth day to actually make the basic shape of the tank. Uh, yeah, so it's a multiple days project, but uh, I think it was worth it. Now, let's see what I'm up against. Not a, not a very strong tanks, but I'm not going to complain. Oh, hi. It seems like my 37mm gun isn't quite enough. Uh, that's not a big problem. 
I can just use my 130 mm gun. Also, I probably forgot to mention, but the 30 grade one has a 920 horsepower engine, and this one has a 1000 horsepower engine, and it's uh, three tons heavier than the 30 grade one. The 30 grade two is uh, 54 tons. So yes, it's a bit heavier, but uh, I mean, it's still not that heavy compared to some other NATO tanks. Well, I consider this a NATO tank because it certainly doesn't look Eastern. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Now, where is the last one? I'm thinking that uh, it's probably an unactivated AI tank somewhere back here. Uh, no. Then, where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. I found you. Boom. Dead. Not big surprise. So, yes, this would be the Tardigrade 2. Uh, I also probably forgot to mention that the add-on armor for the turret is also removable and there's also a driver's position right here which is a bit different from the tardigrade ones but overall it's uh, well these two are pretty similar tanks let's just say that <laughs> so yes the special armor does hold up occasionally and uh, I made some tanks around it. But uh, I don't encourage using these uh, autobounce uh, angle armor pieces because, as I said, they are hard to work around and uh, they are pretty damn unusable whenever someone attacks you from an angle which uh, basically makes the autobounce angles of your armor unusable. So yes, huge disadvantages, not that great advantages, so overall 0 out of 10, don't use this kind of uh, armor. <clears throat> Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hit the dislike button, if not, hit the dislike button. If you want to, you can unsubscribe and tell me in the comments what you think of this kind of uh, experimental armor and uh, what you think of my tardigrade main battle tanks. Thanks for paying attention, bye.